What's up you guys? Welcome back to the Average Joe on Money Financial Channel where we talk about all things personal finance that affect people like you and me, the average Joe. I know that there are a lot of people out there struggling financially, wondering where their next check is gonna come from, worrying about when they're gonna get their stimulus check, and dealing with a lot of financial stress and anxiety. At the end of the day, you are gonna need income, but in this video, let's talk about one, two, three, four, five, six, six effective ways to cut costs in your life right now. One of the things I would highly recommend that you do is print out your bank statements and your credit card statements and that way you have ready access to what you're actually spending money on right now. Right now we're talking about preserving capital and being the most efficient we possibly can with the resources we have, with the money that's coming in. As you're looking at your bank and account statements, let's look out for these six things starting off with number one, which is any gym or subscription fees. Ain't nobody going to the gym right now. Why don't you go out for a jog? If you're a health club, Health club, who says health club anymore? If your gym is actively still charging you month over month for your subscription, make sure you get rid of that expense. Most gyms give you the opportunity to put your membership on hold. Please do that like yesterday. And it seems like we live in the age of memberships and subscription boxes. So make sure you check your statements for any recurring subscription fees that you need to cut in this time of capital preservation. Okay, so second thing you need to look at here is how much are you paying for your cell phone service? Yes, we are very much attached to our smartphones and the data that we're able to access on it, but the truth is you can probably get a better deal somewhere else. Case in point, I used to have Sprint. I switched to Visible Wireless. I'm getting at least the same coverage, if not better, and I would normally be paying $40 a month with this new service, but because I have a party of four people on this new service, my monthly charge, I'm not joking here, is $25 a month, and that's with unlimited data. You don't even have to switch to a low-cost carrier. You could probably get a great deal switching to a different cell phone company right now. How do you know if you're not getting a good deal? Well, if you've been with the same company for more than two to four years, you're probably not getting the best deal that's out there. Okay, so I know this is not going to affect everybody, but if you currently have cash value or whole life or universal life or any of those whole life insurance policies out there that are god awful policies, now might be an excellent time to transition to term life insurance pay a whole lot less money for that insurance and maybe have a cash value that you can then use to help weather this storm from that whole life insurance policy you're gonna cancel once you get that new insurance policy. Red alert here, make sure you do not cancel any existing life insurance policy until your new policy is firmly in place. Whole life insurance policies are extremely expensive compared to term life insurance. I have over $1 million in term life insurance. With that life insurance policy worth over a million dollars, I pay less than less than $35 a month. Holla! If you need a referral for a term life insurance company, I will leave a link in the description below. Okay, next up, number four here is to call your auto insurance company and your homeowner's insurance company and see if you can change your coverage and potentially lower it to be charged less each month. More so with the auto insurance than the homeowner's insurance because right now I bet you you're driving a lot less than you were before. And while most insurance companies out there are in the process of trying to give credits and rebates back to their existing customers, see if you can actively call them to lower lower your coverage and save additional money. Okay, number five, do you have credit card debt? Because if you do, during a crisis like this, call your credit card company, let them know that you're struggling financially and see what they can do for you. Back in 2011, 2012, when we were struggling financially, I owed over $10,000 on my American Express card. I called American Express, I told them what was going on. They gave me six months interest free, which allowed me to pay down that balance really quick. That's not the only option out there. They might even give you an option to defer a payment or two. And if you can weigh on a record of on-time payment history and maybe even a threat to consolidate debt as a last resort, maybe you can structure a great deal to save money on any recurring credit card obligations you have in the coming months. Okay, lastly, number six here, and I know that this might seem very unpopular given the fact that we're sheltering in place at home and we're stuck at home, but we need to actively look at cutting costs with respect to your cable or satellite TV contract and your streaming services, depending on which one you have. If it's possible for you to downgrade your service for a lower cost and not have any fees, definitely try and do that. Your cable company might actively want to work with you, especially if you're really close on your contract expiring. If your contract is not yet expired on your cable or satellite TV and the fee to cancel now is less than a month of service, you might want to actively cancel it right now and switch over to streaming services like Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime and Disney Plus that are a whole lot cheaper 
than your cable or satellite bill. And you can look to consolidate your streaming services as well. Do you have friends and family you wanna split the bill with and have just one account? With Netflix and other providers as well, you have the ability to share it on multiple devices. This by no means is an exhaustive list of ways to cut costs given the current crisis we're dealing with, but it's six ways to get you on your way to thinking the right way with respect to capital preservation. How can we save as much money as possible and be most efficient with the dollars that are coming in, whether it's unemployment, our job that we still have, or a stimulus check? I'm positive I missed a ton of things here, so make sure to leave your two cents in the comments below. Let me know which other types of expenses you are actively cutting to save money, and let me know which of the cost-cutting measures I talked about in this video you are gonna use in your own budget. Make sure to leave your two cents in the comments below. So if you haven't done it yet, and how have you not done it yet? Make sure to hit that like button below because you found some value out of this video and hit the subscribe button to be subscribed to the Average Joe on Money financial channel. I aim to put out at least two to three videos each and every week that help people like you and me, the Average Joe, win with money and become smarter up here when it comes to our finances. The great news for you is even though this video is about to end, the learning doesn't have to stop. You can click on these videos right over there.